Hello to you and welcome to Adelante Chicago. I'm Lourdes Duarte. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is one of the biggest cultural events of the year for the Latino community, promoting the work of filmmakers in Latin America and right here at home. It is the Chicago's Latino Film Festival and joining us now with a preview of what to expect this year, Alejandro Riera. He is a media relations for the International Latino Cultural Center. This is one of my favorite things to do every year. Good. You come in and good. we get to take good. a peek at some of the movies well, that are and now I understand it. you have somebody to take to the movies too. Oh my! I, yes. I mean, that's the what big the engagement. that's yeah, what yeah. Las <laughs> Lenguas are saying, you know. Okay, I will have to take them. I will have to take them. Okay, so what's different this year than some of the others that we've that we've well, seen? Well, you know, different, different, not so much. Uh, you know, we have the same number of feature-length films that we mm -hmm. had last year, the same number of shorts. What we do have, and it sort of happened by serendipity okay. more than anything else, we do have a very strong series of films that talk about the Afro-Latino experience in Latin America. And we do have a stronger set of documentaries, very personal documentaries, in fact, than we had last year. So if, if I were to, the, to look at the festival and look at things that make it distinctive this year, I will say those are the two key areas. Yeah, I've noticed that just in general, documentaries picking up steam in the Pick, last couple yeah. of years, yeah. They're, they're picking up steam in the last couple of years, even though documentaries in terms of our community have been a little bit of a hard sell. So that's mm -hmm. why we've been a little bit choosy trying to select the kind of documentaries that will truly speak to the experience because even though the, you know documentaries like RBG like the uh, Mr. Rogers uh, documentary from last year we're doing gangbusters in the box office it's still hard to pull our audience our community hmm. into the cinemas to watch a documentary that's interesting okay so let's get to it and talk about some of these movies that we'll see I've got a clip from the first ah. one Yuli let's take a look no. Okay, there's a little bit. And you talked about the Afro-Latino experience mm -hmm. or Afro-Caribbean experience. Is this one of those movies? I would say, yeah, that's one of those movies. And I, honest to goodness, when we started packaging together and started working on the press releases, I didn't think of you in those terms. I was thinking more of it in terms of the close opening night film and the fact we're going to mm -hmm. have a second screening. But Julie does belong within that category. Uh, it's the story of Carlos Acosta, one of the leading Cuban dancers. He's a leading dancer in the National Ballet in England. Uh, it's his life story. It's done. It's very interestingly put together. It's both a traditional biopic, but at the same time, you have Carlos in the film creating choreographies around key chapters of his life. Ooh. So you have this combination of straightforward biopic with, you know, performance art, if you will, with mm -hmm. actual choreographed original pieces for the film. Uh, director is really interesting. He's Yerbo Yain. She's a Spanish filmmaker. She's been doing a lot of socially conscious films, uh, particularly in association with her uh, partner, uh, Paul Laverty, who's written a lot of films for Ken Loach. And it sort of takes them out of the comfort zone because their stories are linear in the structure and they're pretty much, they're fiction stories yeah. taking on specific issues. They've never tackled a biopic like this one before. So it has them coming out from their comfort zone. That's our opening night film. It's yeah. sold out, but we have a second showing on March 30th at the AMC at seven o'clock and Ooh, it's doing good. really well. So people want to check it out. March 30th, Saturday, it's the way to go. March 30th, got it. Next movie, it's The Mist Round. And we can talk about it as we show a uh, yeah. video of this movie. This What's is, this about? Mi the Mist Round is the story of this former boxer uh, who's seen better days. And he's pretty much, he gets kicked around as a uh, sparring partner for other boxers. And all of a sudden, this kid pops up and says, hi, you're my father, and I want you to train me as a boxer, you know, some 11-year-old kid. And it's how that kid, and you, I think you've seen him in the trailer now, sort of brings new meaning to his life. And this is another film that fits in, in within that Afro-Latino block of films that is we have. Is it considered a documentary? No, actually, no, this is a fictional a feature, yeah, okay. from Colombia. Uh, and as you can see from the images, this is very rooted on that Afro-Colombian experience, on that community. Uh, we have another film that we don't have the trailer for here, but it's a film from Chile, a documentary called Petit Frere. And it's the uh, documentary about the growing Haitian community in Chile. I mean, Chile being that far south in South America, you will, you will not think of Chile as... It's not as, something that I would have put together, no. Yeah, with Haiti. And <laughs> yeah. yet there's a growing community. And that's one of those films that I find really curious and very mm -hmm. original and very unique uh, that people should really check out as well. Okay, next up, Filiberto. Filiberto. All right, so let's get into some controversy here. We're doing this one in association with the Segundo Ruiz Belvis Cultural Center. In fact, yeah. we're screening it first at the Ruiz Belvis on April 6th with two additional screenings at the AMC River East. 
Filiberto is the uh, documentary about Filiberto Herarios, who was the commander in chief of Los Macheteros, the underground clandestine army that fought for in the, the independence of Puerto Rico. Uh, it's an interesting story because, you know, Filiberto started out as a musician for orchestras like La Sonora Ponceña. He developed this, this national conscience, this conscience about Puerto Rico claiming its own identity, claiming its independence, and he became a legendary figure of the independence movement, especially because in the eyes of many, he put his money where his mouth was. I mean, he fought for independence. Many people may not agree with the methods, but he was, he was a, a, a pivotal figure of 1970s and 1980s Puerto Rican politics. And to me, this is a very relevant documentary because I lived through everything that happened in that documentary yeah, in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico time, uh, yeah. It's well researched, it's well documented. One of, the, for me, the most fascinating segments in the film is when the uh, director interviews the two FBI agents who were tasked with bringing him down. And, wow. and, and arresting him. Uh, to get that sort of insight from the other side is very rare in a film yeah. of this sort. And I always think it's so interesting how long these filmmakers work on putting these yeah. together. It's yeah. years and years. Yeah. Well, and what I find fascinating is that Filiberto came out last year at the same time as New York and Basket. So you had mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico two films that dealt with this very vibrant period of Puerto Rican history, the 1970s, one from the perspective of sports and how politics played into sports, and then this one that's purely political. Okay, next up, a Decade of Fires, and we'll show a little bit of video of that. What's that one about? Decades of Fire is another great documentary. So again, we have some great documentaries <laughs> this year. Decade of Fire is the story of the South Bronx and what happened to the South Bronx in the 70s. During the 50s and 60s, the South Bronx was, I will say, the shining star of New York. It was one of the most diverse neighborhoods in New York City. And during the 70s, a series of circumstances that led to a series of fires literally burned south, the South Bronx down. And what the filmmakers do in the film is research and investigate the reasons and the forces that led to the destruction of the South Bronx and how the people who stayed in the South Bronx struggle and fought to retain that identity and to bring it back up. Uh, there's a Chicago connection. One of the producers is Neda Martinez, who is a, uh, from Humboldt Park. He is a producer for PBS America Reframe series of documentaries. Uh, he'll be in town uh, presenting the film as well. And I will say this film sort of not only has that Chicago connection through NADA, but also uh -huh. for Chicago Puerto Ricans, it will bring memories of the times when they were pushed out of their own neighborhoods, like when the New York Puerto Rican community made Lincoln Park their enclave and how they were pushed back out of that neighborhood during the 70s and 80s. This will sort of, they will find something to relate to. And I think yeah. there are points of, a, a points of, of connection here between what happened here yeah. in Chicago and New York. One of the cool things about this is I take a look at it, the fact that they're using a lot of that old footage, right. which sometimes it's so difficult to get your hands on later in life. Right, so, so this is another documentary that's incredibly well researched. I mean, they went in depth on what exactly, what were the political, the social, the economic, the even the criminal causes mm -hmm. behind what they rightfully call the decade of fire on the film. How many uh, Chicago-based either documentaries or films do we have this year? Because I know not, we try to expand out not internationally. Not as many as we would like. You know, last year we had a, I will say last year we had a far significant number of films than this mm -hmm. year. Uh, the reality is that two things. One, films take forever to make. Yeah. Even though with all this wonderful digital technology that makes it accessible, you know, it's not only about the making of the film, it's also about the editing of the film. You know, and sometimes I know filmmakers who, you know, pretty much had their budgets that, that will cover only the production but not the post-production. It'll take, me, take them yeah. another year or two to raise the funding for the post. So there's that. There's sometimes films that are not of the quality that yeah. we would like. So there are a series of factors. So we've had years in which we had zero Chicago films and then years in which we all of a sudden have four or five. Well, let's <laughs> hope for next year. Let's hope so for next get year. Get going, folks. Get going. <laughs> Those Kickstarter funds, you know, go fund me. Get go. your post-production funded. There you go. <laughs> let's get the information up on the screen as to when you can be a part of the Chicago Latino Film Festival. Starts March, March 28th, runs until April. April 11th, so a good two-week span there. You can buy tickets. You can check out the film, Chicago Latino Film Festival. Dot org. Always a great time, always great movies, so I wish you well. Thank you. Okay. And you know who to take over now. I know, to the movies. I know. We better I gotta, come. <laughs> I got to write it down. All right, thank you, Alejandro. Thank you.